Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video on religious trauma recovery. My name is Angel DeSantis. If this is your first video with me, uh, my name is Angel. I grew up in the Children of God. I left. This is not a recruitment video. Um, with this video I want to talk about the recovery process, specifically creativity in the recovery process. Because one of the things that I said all of the time um, for a, quite a few years after I left the cult and something that I hear often from people is, oh, I'm not creative. And when I suggest things for people to do or books to read or things like that, it's, oh, I'm not a reader or, oh, I don't enjoy that or, oh, I'm not creative. I don't, I don't, basically I don't try new things. And I did that for the longest time as well. And I think we all know why we do that. It's because if we tried anything new, we were beaten <laughs> or we were punished. Anytime that you try to bring a spark of life to a community that benefits when everyone is numb and almost dead inside, you're going to be punished for that. So for me, I was a very bright, happy, creative, wonderful child, if I do say so myself. Um, and I was beaten a lot and I was hurt a lot and I was punished a lot. Whenever I tried to have any sort of uh, creative expression that came from me, I was allowed to have creative expression if it involves being really creative with like putting a tune to a Bible verse or cleaning the floor really good or taking care of children. Anything like that I was allowed to do. But anything that encouraged autonomy for me or anything that made me come to life more, I was punished for. And so you learn to stamp yourself out. They stamp you out and then you stamp yourself out just to kind of preempt. If you stamp yourself out, it's easier than them stamping you out. So you learn to be a lesser version of yourself. And quite frankly, it's easier to survive in that environment when you are less. Because when there is a group of people, whether it's the church or whether it's a cult or it's your personal family, when there's a group of people that can only function if everyone is passive except for a few people at the top, then they will actively try and stamp out anything that you show that isn't passive. So that's kind of the origin point of the wound. But as we continue on in life and as you are able to get away from your family or get away from the cult or get away from the oppressive religion or church, you might still have that mindset with you that, oh, I'm not creative. And you might still hold yourself back from trying anything new um, just because you've trained yourself to be that way. And I had done that a hundred percent. And I really didn't try anything new for about, ooh, for about three to four years after I left. And when I did try anything new, I would be bad at it, of course, because it was new. And then I would use that as confirmation that I was bad at everything that I did in life and that I was not a creative person. And then I wouldn't try again. And what I was doing that was incorrect was I was taking myself who had been in a environment that thrived off of abuse and stamping down people's light. And I was comparing myself to people who had been encouraged to be creative from birth or from when they went to kindergarten or whenever they were in school. And I was thinking, I'm not a creative person. And this person is a creative person. And really, we are both, we both have the same potential, but we were in different environments. And one environment encouraged creativity and personal expression. So the human being that you get it from that environment is a more creative human being than the environment that I grew up in, which made me a very not creative human being. But then what I did is I self-identified as I am not creative, which was not true. And I think the true statement that I would like for you to come to terms with is the idea that you have the potential to be creative. And that is a true thing. You have the potential to be creative or you have the potential to be more creative. And it's important that you understand that if you are viewing yourself as a non-creative, it might just be that the environment that you were in didn't encourage it or it hated it and would punish you for it. And that's different than you not being creative. Those are two incredibly different things. 
But I believe that being creative is a really big part of the healing journey because being creative comes from internal stuff. It doesn't come from external stuff. It comes from within. So as you are healing, it's important to bring more of yourself to life. And the way to do that is to encourage personal expression and curiosity. And for me, I wasn't creative, so I didn't do anything, which made me feel like a loser. And I was just like, oh, whatever. I'm just not going to try anything. Um, but what I did do is I began to Google things because I thought, well, I can't create anything and I'm not creative, but I do have questions. And now that I'm no longer going to be punished all of the time for everything, I am allowed to look for information to answer the question. And so what I would do is I then started allowing my brain to ask questions and then I would Google it. So I, it would be the silliest stuff. It would be like, who invented the first hot air balloon? And when I had the thought, I wouldn't think, oh God, I don't know, I guess I'm a loser. I would think, wait, 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 I have the potential to be creative about this. So let me Google it and look at the first three articles and then have like multiple sources of information that'll probably all say like different variations of the same thing about the first hot air balloon. Or it would be like, where do, like, how do otters get born? Um, I, I don't know. But in the interest of acknowledging my brain's curiosity, I would Google it. And so that allowed me to start stepping into a creative mind without me being creative. And so I encourage you to look around and see if there's anything like that that you can invite yourself to do, which doesn't immediately require you to all of a sudden be this creative person, but it allows you to start giving yourself the satisfaction of satisfying your curiosity because curiosity leads to creativity. However, as you well know, if you grew up in a really abusive and oppressive environment, they wouldn't have encouraged any of that. So I encourage you to start looking for small, small little ways for you to be creative. And I know that there are some of you here who have, who are really creative, who have recovered from the background that you were in and are now using creativity to help you to heal. And please um, drop in the comments, let us know what it is that you do or how, how you found what you found. And for me, I found creativity through my yoga practice and through photography. Those are my two things that I do that I absolutely love. Um, the photography I, I do for no good reason. I try and capture light. And that's kind of my thing. If I see really beautiful lighting, then I try and capture it. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't matter though, because I'm not a photographer. I just enjoy trying to be creative with light. And that brings more of me to light to life. And that has me go around kind of searching for new experiences, new places, things that I want to photograph different times a day, things like that. And then with my yoga practice, it's always new and exciting because the yoga framework, there's a, there's a limited amount of stuff that you can do with your body, but there's sort of an unlimited amount of ways to put it together. So that keeps me really creative as well. Um, but I encourage you to bring more of you to, to life and to question why you view yourself as a non-creative person. Because again, as we established in the beginning, you have potential to be more creative. So if you have that potential and there is more of you that you want to discover or uncover, then I encourage you to start finding ways to bring more of your creativity to life by satisfying your curiosity. So is there anything that you want to know more about? And if so, what is one or two things that you can do to satisfy that curiosity? And again, it's not like a life changing thing. It's just something that you were doing um, to allow yourself that sense of curiosity that was stamped out of you as a child. And that's an important, it's a really important part of self-development. And it's important for you to bring that back now as you are today. So. That's my video this week. Again, if you have found a way to be creative, get in the comments, drop it, talk about it, um, leave links for people. I know that people find these videos sometimes years later 
and the information still holds. So I found my creativity through photography and yoga and both of those things I kind of stumbled into. And if there's anything that you want to share, please do. And I encourage you again to keep bringing that potential for creativity to life because that part of you, that sense of self, that part of you is really worth discovering. It's worth bringing that part to life. So think about it. Give yourself permission to satisfy your curiosity and watch more of you come to life. So that's my video this week. I hope that it was helpful. I do have a website and some courses coming out summer 2022. So stay tuned for those. Um, otherwise, thank you so much as always for being here and I'll see you next week.